This video demonstrates how to use OpenPy Excel to read in Python the options available to you in a data validation list in a cell within an Excel workbook. This testing document you can see here contains two sheets. On sheet one, you can see a single data validation list in cell B2. On sheet two, you can see two data validation lists, the same one in B2 and one in C4. I will be using the first sheet to demonstrate how to read items from a data validation list from a single data validation list object on a page, and the second sheet to demonstrate how to find and read the options from the list from multiple data validation objects. Here, I am bringing in the workbook as WB, and I am selecting sheet one as WS1 and sheet two as WS2. Starting with the first sheet, I'm going to use the data validations attribute of sheet one to see what data validation list objects we have on the worksheet. Printing this out, you can see that I am returned with a count of one data validation list objects on the page. To access the specific data validation object, I can use the data validation attribute of the data underscore validations attribute of the worksheet. This returns a list, as you can see by the open and closed square brackets surrounding the output. Given we only have one data validation object on the sheet, there is only one item in this list. You'll also notice two specific parameters here. The first is square ref. Square ref is the cell in which the data validation list exists, which we can see here is B2. The second parameter to notice is formula one, which contains all of the options available to you in the list. So we have B2 as the cell and one, two, three as the options. Getting to the available options for a user is simple. You just access the single item we have in our list, and here we can use zero because there is only one item, and then select the attribute formula one. Printing this out, we can see the possible choices that the Excel user has nicely displaying as a string. To have them display as a list, you can replace the double quotes with an empty string and split on the comma. So that's how you accomplish this with a single data validation list object on a page. Accessing the correct one when there are multiple on a page is a bit trickier, but it can be done. Looking at the data underscore validations attribute of our second page, we can notice a couple differences. The first is that we have a count of two, which is what we would expect. We can also see the two different data validation objects on the page by their cell references. Seeing here, we have one in cell C4 and one in B2. This time, accessing the data validation attribute shows us a list of two items. If we want to access the data validation object we are interested in, we need to cycle through these items and figure out a way to identify the correct data validation object. I will demonstrate how to do this by using the cell range to signify which data validation object I want. As an example of how I will access the cell's coordinates, I will start with the first item on the list. You can see here I am accessing the square ref of the specific data validation object. We can see its location at C4. In order to obtain the range of cells this represents, I will add the dot ranges attribute. What is returned, we can see below, is a set of the cell ranges. To pull the item out of the set, I am going to change it to a list and extract, with square bracket notation, the only item in that list. I'm going to now use the type function to show what type of object this is. Here we can see we have a cell range object. Each cell range object has coordinates, which can be accessed with the dot chord attribute. And with this line of text, we have accomplished our task of collecting just the cell wherein the data validation object exists, C4. Now that we've learned how to locate the cell we care about, we can loop through all our data validation objects and home in only on the one that we want to look into. 
But first, I want to loop through everything we have and print out the content, just to show you that we are appropriately accessing the cell's contents. This code might look a little intimidating, but it's all stuff that we just covered. I will start the loop by enumerating through the list of data validation objects currently on Worksheet 2. I will use E as the number for the enumeration, which starts with 0, and data validation as the loop variable. The second line collects the cell location. You can see here that this code is exactly the same as the above line, so we should expect the data underscore validation underscore cell underscore location variable to be a string of text with the cell's location. The next line contains the options within that location, and as you can see, I am accessing the formula one attribute just as I was doing earlier in this video. You can see I am using E within the square brackets to make sure I am only choosing the object for a given loop. Finally, I end this for loop by printing out the contents that I just collected. Executed, we can see the cell locations and the options that are stored there. Now, if I uncomment the last two lines and comment out that initial print statement, I can perform some logic just for the cell that I care about. All I need to do here is check the cell's location with this comparison operator to read only the data validation object that I'm interested in. Executing this, we can see that the line I'm printing out only prints when the cell location is C4. So accessing the options available to you in a list dropdown does require a bit of logic if you have multiple data validation objects that you're working with, but it is straightforward when you break it out into pieces. To obtain the options, you start by accessing the data validation attribute and the data validation object on that attribute. You then select the data validation object that you are working with, and this can be hard-coded as I demonstrated with using zero, or it can be accessed with a loop. You then use the formula one attribute of the cell range object, and then you can use some replace and split logic to turn the string of options into a list. And thank you for stopping by and checking out this video on accessing options in a data validation object. Please let me know in the comments if it was helpful, and let me know what other features of OpenPy Excel, Python, or Excel in general you might like seeing reviewed in future videos. If this video was helpful, do give it a thumbs up as it does help other folks find this content. And please remember to hit subscribe so that you know when the next video drops.